I don't know if you guys can tell, but this pupil is way bigger than this pupil. And that's the kind of fun we have in optometry school. I'm going to talk about pupil testing. During pupil testing, the optometrist is probably going to be turning the lights off and on a lot, and they'll be putting things up to your eyes, and then they will shine lights into your eyes. First they'll go into one eye and then the other eye, then they'll go back and forth, and then they'll go back and forth but slower. Uh, testing the pupils is a neurological assessment. Pupil testing is not just done in the optometrists, it's often done in emergency rooms and stuff to see if there is any neurological damage and whatever trauma might have occurred. And my teacher, Dr. Wormington, says that if the eyes are the windows to the soul, then the pupils are the windows to the central nervous system. So we have to know our neuroanatomy. Pupil testing and then it says with big stars, know your neuroanatomy. But to put it simply, there is a pathway that goes from the outside world to your brain called the afferent pathway. Then there's another pathway that goes from your brain to your irises, which will control the amount of light coming into your eyes by changing the size of your pupil. And that is called the efferent pathway with an E. So what we're writing down on our paper is PERLA, which is the P stands for pupils, E is for equality or equal, and that's judging the size. R is for round, so judging the shape of it. Uh, the next RL stands for reaction to the light, and the A is for accommodation. And then we're also judging if there's an RAPD, which stands for relative afferent pupillary defect. P just stands for pupil, so then Above the E, we have to say if the eyes are equally sized. And we do that by lining up the pupils with a bunch of half moons like this. And then there's a number by each of them that says the diameter in millimeters. And first in the regular light, you, you line it up to see how big it is, and then go to the other side and see if they're equal. And then you do the same thing in dark. And then we write it like this, right on top and left below. So now I'm going to talk about anisocoria, which is what I showed myself having in the beginning of the video, which one, when one of my pupils was way bigger than the other. Now, anisocoria can mean a lot of different things. It could be completely normal. Some people might just have different sized pupils, and that's not that uncommon. Drug-induced anisocoria. They could have um, Horner's syndrome. And another thing that we're looking for, which is a light near dissociation, which means your pupils will react to accommodation, but they won't react to light. And that could indicate uh, Aedes tonic pupil or Argyle Robertson pupil, which is um, a sign of tertiary neurosyphilis. So then there's all these tests that you could do to figure out why the person had an isochoria. The first R stands for round. There are pupils that can be misshapen due to trauma or other diseases like this. Okay, the RL stands for reactive to light, and that's when they're just going into one eye at a time. That's to show if your pupils do constrict or get smaller when they're in the light. We're grading this from 0 to 4. 0 means it doesn't react to light at all. Then 1 through 4 is how fast it is. Then A is for accommodation. And that just means when you focus to something up close. And when you focus to something up close, your eyes also constrict. So they might have you put your thumb in front of you and then look at the letter on the chart and then look at your thumb. RAPD, Relative Afferent Pupillary Defect. That's what they're looking for when they go back and forth between the eyes. So when you shine a light into one of your eyes, both of your eyes are going to constrict. When you keep light on for a longer period of time, it, your pupil will constrict and then it'll dilate a little bit. At first they're going to go fast and it's going to just be one second in each eye. And what we're looking for is the 
initial constriction of the eyes. And then when we go slower, and there's three seconds of light in each eye, we're looking for the dilation. And the dilation should be slower and smaller than it would be if you go back to dark. That's why your doctor is going to be flashing this light in your eyes. So if you've ever heard the term perla, now you know what it means. That's one reason why your optometrist shines lights in your eyes.